In this section, we'll discuss good lifting mechanics and techniques to prevent being bitten while lifting and handling a dog. Picking up a dog to move it from one location to another should be your last choice. First, try getting it to walk on a lead or transport it in a carrier or cart. However, there are many cases where lifting various sized dogs onto treatment tables are necessary. Let's discuss restraint lifting first. Whenever approaching a dog on the ground, it's always safest if they are properly leashed. One of the first rules of thumb to remember is that you always want to control the head. One way this is accomplished is with a leash, especially if it is of the choker variety or one that tightens as the leash is pulled. There is a psychological advantage in that the dog is more likely to assume a submissive role. However, be careful to never choke a dog when leashing. There is a difference between firm restraint and choking when using a leash. Once the dog is leashed, you should first attempt to gain the dog's trust before attempting to lift him. First, get down on their level. Your smaller appearance will not be so intimidating to a frightened dog. If the dog is comfortable with you down at his level, slowly offer your hand for them to smell. Constantly watch their reactions for any sign of potential aggression. If the dog shows any hesitation towards your hand, pull it back immediately to prevent any further aggressive response. It is often helpful to speak to the dog in quiet, friendly tones, often using the dog's name to increase familiarity. Once you have established that the dog is accepting of you, take a few moments to gently stroke the dog's coat. This will assure the dog that you are not going to hurt it. Each dog has a different comfort zone. The jumpier it is, the more time you'll need to invest in order to safely handle it. Once you have established a level of trust with the dog, you can attempt to pick them up. In cases where you have not gained the dog's trust or the dog shows continual aggression, you should consider using a muzzle and having an assistant help you lift and restrain the dog. If this is the case for a very large dog, consider conducting the treatment or exam on the floor instead of a treatment table. When lifting a dog, you will want to pick it up with confidence, as it will often squirm if it fears being dropped. With a small dog, you will want to control the head with one hand while wrapping the other under the dog's chest. Notice how the handler is using the leash in this situation to keep a small amount of tension on the head and neck. This helps discourage a quick turn and possible bite. Once off the ground, dogs are generally more trusting, allowing you to sometimes relax your control of the head and neck. Lifting a medium to large size dog will require you to use both arms and hands. The best technique for a medium sized dog, 15 to 50 pounds, would be to cradle one arm behind the rear legs and the other arm across the chest and front legs as demonstrated here. It becomes especially important with these larger dogs to use good lifting mechanics to prevent back injuries. Notice how the legs are primarily used, keeping the back as straight as possible. When a very large dog must be lifted, you can often ask another colleague for assistance. You can lift the front or back half, and he or she can lift the other half. This two-person technique is especially helpful when the dog is over 50 pounds. Handlers should also consider wearing a back brace, especially when lifting medium and large-sized dogs. When lifting a larger dog, your face will be more vulnerable to being bitten. If you're in doubt, either muzzle the dog or consider conducting the procedure or exam on the floor. In the next section, we're going to discuss good restraint techniques while performing various procedures.